This is movie uh, script uh, pitch and screenplay from my book entitled From McCartney Jackson number three, okay? Because we have to put it in segments because it, it's taking a little longer, and I'm trying to cut it short. Okay. Where I left off is, is Paul McCartney was calling, but we didn't know it at the time, and because he got the message from Paul Pink, senior music producer of um, uh, Capitol Radio in London. So anyway, uh, we were watching uh, the new movie Roger Rabbit. So then after it was over, we went in there and pushed buttons. And we were listening. Okay, I said, what's your mother want now? You know, we we're just doing the playback on the little recorder, okay? The, the company, HH uh, Records, recorded. It says, hello, hello, piss in the piss and call from Mr. Harold Hodges. This is an overseas call. Please pick up, please, sir. Uh. And well, I, who in the world is that? You know, we didn't know. And so we were listening. And, and she said, sorry, sir, it must be too late to be calling the United States in San Antonio, Texas, where you're calling, sir. We can try again tomorrow, if you please. And, I, and so I said, who is this? And we're freaked out. So I was listening, listening. All of a sudden, she said, who may I tell him's calling, please? And he says, thank you very much for asking. This is Paul McCartney calling. And I thought, oh, my God. I miss Paul McCartney's call. A chance of a lifetime. I can't believe it. So anyway, he said, we'll try again tomorrow, if you please, and all that. So anyway, then that was at 9.45 at night, like I said. Then three other calls came in, and be, one of them I blame on my wife. She wouldn't go and tell you, oh, it's a long story. You have to read the script to find out. But she had me go somewhere else. I missed his call by five minutes, okay? So I missed it. It was devastating. So I was, you imagine I was upset. But to hear the whole thing, you know, re request the script, and I'll tell you the rest. i got to move on because we're very short on time. Okay. Then several things happened. Paul McCartney's watched after my career for over the whole time, okay? We went back and forth. I've sent him stuff. He's called on me. Okay. In 1994, Paul McCartney came to San Antonio, Texas, playing the Alamo Dome. And he opened it. It was a new, huge, like the like the Astro Dome or something, you know, the biggest dome. So anyway, he was there. I was there, and so I, I we got our tickets. I went in. I asked the the, the security guard, "Look, uh, I know Paul's coming on in just a few minutes here. Can you please hear? I'm Harold Hodges. I gave him my uh, company credit, uh, company card with uh, my information. I put on back the seats where I'm gonna be at. So would you do me a big favor? Here's a package, and this got." B Beatles for John, a tribute to John Lennon and George Harrison. We give it to him. He says, yes, sir, I sure will. I'm going to cut this real short. So after I go back to my seat, then I'm looking with the binoculars. Just before the band came on stage, the curtain moved, and all of a sudden I saw somebody with binoculars, and then they couldn't see, so they stepped out further, looked up. Paul McCartney's looking at me up in the stands where I wrote my seat number, and I'm looking right back down to him with the binoculars, and I'm going, woo, 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 woo. And, oh, it was so exciting and awesome, okay? All those true stories are in this thing. I'm going to have to move forward. There's a lot more to it than that, but I'm going to have to move forward. Okay? Then I had a dream. Uh, and this was only last year. And it, it's, you know how dreams can be so true to life. It, and it was all about uh, seeing uh, George Harrison and John Lennon. And they gave me a message in this dream uh, of a song to send to the whole earth. Of, and it was a plea to me, and they entrusted me with it and said, carry the t fire torch to the whole world and please send this message to the whole world that we're still playing and singing just like we did yesterday and to tell them peace and love and we remember us that way. And it was so awesome and it's so real. You know how realistic dreams can be, okay? Well, like I said, you want to hear the whole thing or... <laughs> Give me a, a, a you know email and I'll send you the whole detailed thing. But I had to skip around. This is the middle. So anyway, it says I Harold Hodges am in a deep sleep and I'm starting to walk in a foggy garden-like place. When all of a sudden I start hearing in a distance in the fog uh, a beautiful piano playing a, a song I've never heard before and and someone faintly singing. And so as I walk closer and closer to this this singing and everything that I had been hearing. Uh, the, all of a sudden the wind blew like this and, and blew the fog out enough it was still foggy but enough where I could see who was playing piano it was Paul McCartney playing piano this is a beautiful song I'd never heard before and he's singing all of a sudden out of the smoky fog came two other people and it was uh, George Harrison and John Lennon and their guitars were on stand they picked up and got, and 
got on them, started playing along with Paul on this, this to this beautiful song I'd never heard before. And then Ringo sat down and he jumped on his drums and started playing in unison. And the birds started singing as if they were singing with them. And it's, it's just this beautiful melody. And it was just awesome dream, okay? And realistic. And then after the song was over, they came to me because it was so moving to see John Lennon and George Harrison so realistic. That in my dream, of course, there was tears coming down my face. And they said, please don't be sad. Please send this message through this new song and this dream song entitled Message from John and George from us and send it to the world and, and spread it worldwide and please uh, make everyone hear this. It's our message from, of love and peace and love from us and to please spread it around the earth today. And, and, uh, and we're still singing and playing just like we did yesterday and it's so awesome. So anyway, the minute I wake up from my dream, it's like, huh, is this real or is this a dream? So I ran to my music room, and while I still freshly remembered it, I started playing and singing and got my guitar and wrote down the, everything, the chord arrangements and everything and the, the song. And then I, of course, copyrighted, published it, and then I contacted a friend of mine that I worked with over 20 years, and uh, he has a music uh, studio there in L.A. So we worked for over three months, and I put all the wind sounds and the, uh, international voices in it and stating uh, everything and the birds chirping in it that was singing along with Paul all these sound effects and uh, and I even went into the studio and played myself uh, the uh, uh, sitar because jo as a tribute to George Harrison and it's in the front and uh, when you want to hear this song you let me know and I'll send you these um, this song the mp3 of it and everything and it was awesome Eric Clapton. You know, and, and there's Eric Clapton, hard guitar on the back. Oh, it's just awesome. So let me know, and I'm going to send you this voices. too. Voices. And, and, and the international voices saying, From London today, this is Paul, the, the, the message from John and George. And then, From Tokyo, there's a message from John and George. You know, all these things are in there, yeah, mixed man. in there. Yeah. From down under, there's a message from John and George. You know, so because it's supposed to be a worldwide message going around the earth, and this is hot, and it's everything. Everything can be in this song. Like I said, I have over 167 songs and uh, music tracks only, and I mean, it is awesome, and we can use all these in the movie, okay? So anyway, I'm going to move forward real quick. Uh, then, then after this uh, dream sequence, I woke up, and then I was back, and Eric Thompson had called me. Eric Thompson called me to his office and said, Harold, never going to believe who just called me. And I said, who, Eric? He said, Sir Paul McCartney. And he's got an idea. He heard that we're making a movie for McCartney and Jackson, and he knew it's going to be a hit movie. So he said he wanted to play with you as the crescendo, the ending of the movie, with you on stage, and he's going to play with his band, and you and him are going to play at the Hollywood Bowl in California. And of course, we can use, you know, for yourself and us, we can use like a Beatle tribute band to play any of the parts of the Beatles, Paul McCartney, and in that. So the cost didn't uh, prohibit it, you know. So anyway, for, and it's going to be awesome. So anyway, at the end there, the, we're, uh, Paul and I are both playing my Beatle tribute song, a uh, message from John and George, and he tells the audience, okay, audience, he said, you, I want you to uh, uh, give a big hand to Harold Hodges, the one that wrote this, and stand in ovation, clapping and screaming. And we all played message from John and George, my tribute song and, and everything. And he said, sing this one big and loud so that John Lennon and George Harris can... They hear you, you know, and everything. So it's awesome. And as the, the film ends, of course, the cameras roll back. Now, all this is in there, all the details. All the cameras roll back. And then, of course, the credits roll up the screen. And it is going to be on number one. Gross $750 million or more dollars. And uh, probably $100 million the first weekend of release. And, and I'm, uh, on, I'm, you know, I just can't wait to get with you. So please call me at area code 210 Two seven two zero one nine nine. Harold Hodges. My email address is hjhrecords at gmail.com. If you want to see a hit movie and, and get in on this, uh, the, the Roger Corman saw, call me or email me. Thank you very much.